was going to push start this thing. And I'm not against that, but it's not what I was doing in this particular case. For those of uh, those few of you who have watched the vast majority of my videos, you may have already seen me do this before. My wife was still asleep and she sleeps pretty lightly. So uh, I like to let her sleep, not wake her up. The car is a little bit loud, weighs nothing, so push it down the street a little bit. So I got another trip I'm taking up to home office, Springfield, Missouri. And uh, I failed to get you a before shot, but my hair was completely out of control and went and got a haircut yesterday. So I can look, you know, somewhat presentable. And uh, I'm gonna go up there, have some grilled food prepared by the owner of our company and a few others. Play some games, which I think I'm not actually gonna take part in, but should be just kind of fun to be a spectator anyway. Play some cornhole and whatever. Got a new phone mount I'm trying, and it didn't really work so well on that passenger seat. All right, take three. So for any of you who have watched the second of my longest trip yet video series, you might recall that my generator light came on and went out and came on. And while that's not the most comforting feeling to think about while I'm heading into a two and a half hour each way drive. I have thought this through and I do have a plan. So, there are some uh, similarities between the Bug and the Type 3, not the least of which is sort of the basic design of the motor, or the long block at least. But, while some of the differences favor the Bug, such as the ability to more efficiently cool number three cylinder, which is kind of an interesting thing actually because the Type 3 stock distributor has ground the cam to slightly retard cylinder number three's timing in order to let it run cooler, which is kind of a neat thing, but side point. The advantage that I will use to my advantage of the Type 3 design is this. On a Type 1 motor, if you feel the need to stop spinning your generator, you can't. You lose your cooling because your fan is directly connected to the generator. Whereas on the Type 3, the fan is directly connected to my crank. So I can disconnect the fan belt, which really isn't a fan belt, it's a generator belt not spin my generator and still cool my engine. And all I lose is my charging, which is useful. But you gotta think about the fact that on these older cars, it really doesn't take much to run the engine. Very small amounts of electricity to do that. And so it'll allow me to get home if I need to. Mind you, if the generator light does come on, I will certainly pull over to the side of the road, diagnose the issue, 
that problem, which I did because I didn't know any better, not only are you, you know, overcharging your battery to a point that's not especially healthy, but you're also going to spin all the solder off of your generator. So then not only do you have to replace your voltage regulator, but you also have to rebuild your generator and know that you've, you know, caused some damage to your battery and reduced the lifespan of that. So there are some situations where it might be useful to disconnect the generator. And that is an option that I have because I also remember to bring my highly custom homemade generator tool. But you know what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, you know, think positive thoughts. I'm already a little ways into the uh, journey here. I just passed through the gateway. And uh, I'm in uh, Seligman, I believe. So everything's going great so far. I'm just gonna expect and hope that it will continue to do that. But I do have a backup plan. Let's see what happens. I thought I'd share some of the beautiful countryside I get to travel through when I head up to Springfield. There are other routes I can take, but even when I'm in my fast car, I still generally take this route, even though I can't drive as fast. The scenery compels me, and typically wins out, unless I'm also going to a client site, making this route less efficient. And actually, I attempted to get footage of a couple of especially beautiful and interesting sections but apparently I suffered from technical difficulties or something. Well, I've made it to the office uneventfully. No generator light came on. Everything went well. And uh, pretty happy about it. I did have a blob eye WRX wagon pass by me going the other direction. Made me a little sad. Kind of missing my wagon at this point. Sorry, I don't want to cry on camera. All right, so I'm pulled over here dealing with a little bit of an issue. This is not unfamiliar for me. Car starts up, runs fine. A little while later, oh, look at that. I'm missing a, another damn choke screw. Damn it. Okay, anyway, um, runs okay for a little bit. And then all of a sudden, it's kind of acting funny. Dies when I try to come to a, a, an idle and uh, I can start it back up, but then you can tell there's not gonna be any power when I try to take off. So I pulled over, I poured a little bit of my uh, cool your fuel pump water onto here. So hopefully if I do have any sort of um, uh, vapor lock issue going on, we'll kind of resolve that. Um, it occurred to me that my problem with my generator, which did start uh, coming on again, my light started coming on a little bit, could be with maybe not the best connections in the whole world. So I thought I might uh, look at those a little bit and my God, is that thing loose? So I'm gonna try to tighten that up and uh, I think I'll probably be fine here, but damn it, I'm gonna have to figure out something to do there. I don't have choke screws laying around and I'm down to one now of the three. That's not great. I might have to steal one from that side for time being. All right, so I migrated a screw from the right hand choke to the left hand made sure that all four screws are tight all the way around. Adjusted that to the best of my ability in the moment. And we'll see if uh, vapor lock issues are uh, overcome or if maybe I'm wrong about that being the issue. Let's go figure it out. All right, moment of truth. Let's see what happens. Just flip a U-turn and 
Even though I think it's going to be okay, it doesn't stop me from revving it when I come to an idle. Worst case, I can just pull off the side here pretty easily, but I think we're okay. So, I don't know, I think probably vapor lock. Um, pretty warm out today. And uh, I stopped for a minute and you know and let it set and that seems to that seems to kind of do it you know at least that's the way it was last time but you know knowing that that's the issue and knowing kind of what I can do about it I don't need to get too concerned I can just pull over and pour some water there's some more people that like the car I just love it man um, that'll get me through it and uh, you know keep me going down the road you know once you you kind of learn the different things that may come up it makes it easier to deal with them and it's actually idling really well right now so i mean it normally does and everything but uh yeah this is this is all right <laughs> a little bit further down the road let's see well uh seems like this is helping so far the uh car is running fine after cooling down the fuel pump a little bit and maybe resolving my almost certainly vapor lock issue and uh so far my generator light has also not come back on so i think that was probably the issue you know in my world it's like um have you tried turning it off and on again well in cars are you absolutely sure you've got a good connection oh hey guess what that was the problem more than likely we'll find out anyway uh so i'm driving along and i've been through here so many times and uh i've always meant to stop and i just never do and today i decided hey let's tempt fate man i've already had to stop by the side of the road and fix my car once let's see if i can do it again i just had to stop and look at these cars man so let's check it out like what would i not give to be able to actually be driving this dude down the road Grand View Garage. It might take just a, a little bit of work to get it on the road, maybe. Oh, look at that. You know, this uh, door lock rod here being flat bar that, you know, then they turned and put threads on it. Gotta be kidding me, man. I love this stuff. And look at this freaking handle. Oh God, I love it. windshield is hinged pop out i'm sure there were brackets here and probably something mounted to this to hold it in place actually no nope, never mind that was for the rear view here's the bracket for hinging it out right here yeah oh man so when i was a, a, a much younger man in fact it was given to me when i was still a child my grandma uh, left to me early before she passed away a 1933 Dodge and uh, the 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 hood if you will the cowl very very similar situation the fenders were very very similar look at this simple little carburetor I'll bet you you could get that motor running without a lot of effort unless it's just completely seized but those things, man, just spin them up. Ah, <laughs> oh, so great, man. Look at this gearbox back here. Huge drum brakes on the rear. Oh, what did they, okay. That's, yeah, that's not stock. That's not stock. Now we got another one over here and as much as I like the first one, and I do like the first one, I really, really get excited about, I mean, look, they, they figured out how to do curves and they did them and they're beautiful. Look at that. I mean, just, oh my God. You know, if everything was completely shot, but you were able to just preserve that roof, hang it on your wall. I mean, that's a work of freaking art, man. This little window completely encased in metal. 
And again, with the gorgeous freaking handle, man. Oh, I love this. Flathead. Dude. All right, you know, I don't claim to be super knowledgeable about all the old engines. Looks to me like we've got a generator just sitting there right on top of the motor with the fan directly connected. Why not? I think those plug wires might need replacing if we're gonna try to use them again. Ah, oh, so great. So great. Let's see what we got around here. Yeah, look at that, man. So these are clearly mounted after the fact. That wasn't stock, that was beautiful. Just beautiful. But, you know, at some point it stopped working and so they said, hey, we can fix that problem. <laughs> and then of course the other side's just missing all together. All right, on to the next. What do we got over here, man? Oh, and look at that, look at that, look at that. Ford. All right, let's see what we can figure out about this. Well, first of all, the front end is stripped. Still got some suspension up in there. I'm wondering, yeah, I don't know. I don't know enough to be able to speak intelligently on that. Ooh, okay, right, right to begin with. Gorgeous car, of course, yeah, but, oh, look at that, look at that handle, it's so beautiful, and then, Look at that steering wheel, my God, you gotta be kidding me. Let's see, can I block? How much can I block here? Okay, there you go. What do you think of that? Oh my God, I just love it, love it. Gauges are still in there. Looks like the front end might be in the car. L little bit of rust uh, on that, I think. Just a little bit came through, Oh, oh man, maybe I could find what this car looks like when it's restored and because that uh that bumper is a work of art right there it's just kind of hard to make out through the glass looks like i've found a 1954 chevy bel air oh and then yes sir look at that right there oh so beautiful so beautiful come on man are you kidding Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic right there. And you know, I'm kind of partial to the wagons. I believe we have ourselves a 57 Chevy wagon here. Look at that. All right. Now, you know, it might not have the extra functionality of the Caprice Classic where you can come down with it or sideways. I'm sure you can only just come down with it. But look at this, I think, okay. You lay this dude down and then this is gonna pop up. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Beautiful. God, it's so beautiful. Yeah, so there's your there's your hinges for that top part to flop out, flip up, whatever. And look at all that roof in there. There's so much of it. Yeah, buddy. And you know, there's there's stuff inside. Looks like somebody might have put a different transmission in at some point and you know, hey, I need a hole here. Let's drill some holes and bang it out. And we got another quote unquote missing front end. Yeah, I could enjoy that. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure that this could be cool too. 
it doesn't grab me the way that the older cars do. Look, seems like somebody put a bunch of holes in there to lighten it. They probably were racing it or something, I'm sure. I'm sure that could be really cool, done, you know, having the right stuff done to it. There's the Malibu. Anybody into the Malibu SS? Here's one right here, right in Billings, Missouri. Oh, seriously, I don't even know what this is. But look at that. I don't know if somebody did this after the fact or if this is factory and you just still see like sloppy weld joints here, you know, but that's kind of wild, man. I think that's probably some custom work done after the fact. Look at that deck lid though, man. So beautiful. You know, they, they didn't just stop it at, at the edge here and you know, and you just have this one shape here. It curves through all the way around to this. They didn't have to go to that extra trouble. That's a lot more work, man, but they wanted it to be gorgeous and it is. Oh yeah, dude, some cutting has definitely taken place after the fact. I'm not sure what all is done. It looks like they didn't really finish their dream, I guess, but yeah, chopped it up a bit. Yeah, chopped the roof down. Okay, yeah. All kinds of stuff done there. There you go. Looks like maybe about like what I would be able to produce. You know, so many people used to, like, you know, you, how else are you going to do it? You just, like, figure it out on your own, you know? Now you can watch a YouTube video telling you how to do it, but I'm sure this was done a long time ago. Uh, I'm sure somebody was in love with this project. Oh, yeah, but look. Yeah, here's your... Yeah, it just didn't line up, and, like, uh, how do we make that work? That's too bad. Neat car, man. All right, so that's it. I'm going to leave these cars behind, get on the way. Uh, I wanted to point out, man, you know, so you, you saw there were like, you know, somebody on the road is, you know, interested in the car, but uh, I stopped for fuel and um, two separate people stopped me to, you know, talk about the car, ask about it, tell me that they liked it. And, uh, you know, it occurs to me, like, if you pay too much attention, I don't want to get too political here, but you pay too much attention to, you know, what other people tell you. And you'll think there's all this racial division and all this stuff, you know. I'm going to tell you, man, I don't experience that in my world. Both these people that stopped me were dark-skinned, darker than me. And, um, you know, they were just friendly and interested in the car. And that's what I experience, whether I'm in Missouri or my home in northwest Arkansas or wherever I go. And uh, so that's, that's encouraging, you know, when you hear a lot of this garbage day in and day out, man. Uh, I don't buy into it. Hopefully you don't either. All right, I'm going to get on down the road. Hopefully I don't have any more uh, vapor lock this time. We'll see. All right, well, as you can see, I'm at it again. Pouring water onto my fuel pump. Let it sit a little bit. Let it cool off. I'll be back on the road again. Just proving my theories here. It's uh, <laughs> evaporating on there pretty quickly. It's pretty warm. Immediately following this second vapor lock event, five young people happened up the side road where I was stopped and wanted to know about the car. The youngest of them wanted to know the year, but most of the questions were actually asked by one of the teenage girls. You know how extra special it is to me when not only women, but younger girls get excited about the car. It plays well in Hollywood movies for young women to be super into cars, but the reality is it's not that common. Generally when you do find them, the story involves them being daddy's girl, and he was into cars. Well, I've told you before, I won't be polishing a turd and telling you everything went perfectly well with no problems at all when it's not true. So that brings us to the latest episode of Dumb Stuff I've Done.
for today's installment of Dumb Stuff I've Done begins after I dealt with my second round of vapor lock. And while the method of dealing with it went very well, I was so anxious to get on the road and see if it had worked well, when I pulled out, I wasn't feeling the power I felt I should. At first, I thought maybe it was still not a completely resolved vapor lock issue. When you think about it, this is what to expect. Your carburetor's float bowls are filled with liquid gas, and if the fuel pump is having trouble delivering consistent liquid gas, the float bowl will get low, and as it gets low, the delivery will be inconsistent, which will result in a lean condition. I've experienced clearly what happens when the problem continues. The lean condition leads to an engine which cannot stay running after running erratically. I've theorized that if it is improving but slowly, maybe you would just continue to experience poor performance. Now I was also smelling something which I decided may have been a confirmation that my roadside fix to the generator had been in vain. Perhaps the generator was heating up and about to fail spectacularly. That smell kind of came and went, so after a few minutes, I looked down and noticed that I had failed to disengage my emergency brake. I know, you're thinking, how in the heck did you fail to notice that, David? Well, those die-hard fans of you out there may remember a video a while back where I shared the fact that my rear drums may have about 40% of the inside surface hardened. If you've ever seen people explaining how to verify if your steel hardening efforts were successful, you may have seen how they'll take a file to the steel, and if it skates across the steel, it's hard. If it bites in, it isn't. Well, that is essentially what my brake shoes are doing, skating across the inside of the drum. Mind you, there still is friction, which creates heat and an odor. This issue resolved itself after disengaging the emergency brake, though. Well, that concludes this installment of Dumb Stuff I've Done. Please join us again next video, which is almost certain to have another installment. One last thing I'd like to share about this trip. While I was waiting in the food line with my buddy Travis, we were talking old cars, and another friend was next to us in line. Travis was being very complimentary about my videos, and I have several friends who do that. Perhaps I'm just a little too critical of myself, but I often think they may just be being nice. However, to the best of my knowledge, Travis may be my biggest fan. I'm not kidding. Every time I see him, he's like, Hey, I saw your latest video where you fixed your seat, or whatever. It surprises me every time that he's still watching. But he took it to another level, and convinced my friend to check out my channel. Later on, I got an alert on my phone about a new subscriber, and I was all, Hey, I recognize that name. Kind of like guerrilla marketing, but eh, less covert. Anyway, that brings us to the end of another adventure. If you're enjoying the content, please consider liking, subscribing, and just telling everybody in the whole world you know about how life-altering my videos are for you.